Today in the news, AMD gets some help, Ryzen is on track, and lasers unlock your door. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with AMD. So, boost problems. We all heard of them when it comes to Ryzen 3000, but does everyone have them? Not necessarily. The latest BIOS patches have been quite good at bringing lacking CPUs back to advertised speeds, but there are still some of those who just don't seem to hit them. Well, Tech Power Ups got you covered there with their new Windows Power Plan. So when you pop in your third gen Ryzen CPU, you have to install AMD's chipset drivers, which change your power plan to a modified version that AMD created. Well, one is must over at Tech Power Up, who also created things like the Ryzen DRAM calculator, just released a custom power plan for Windows which should get you to and beyond advertised speeds. The advantage with this one is you don't have to update your version of Windows for it to work. On the article, Wanosmus says that his power plan helps you reach the advertised clocks plus a bonus of around 50 MHz. All of that while dropping the temperature a little bit and by focusing on the two best cores. You can see on this graph how his power plan focuses on two cores whereas the AMD one focuses on three or four. If you want to try it out, I'll link to the instructions and the download page in the description, but keep in mind that if you're getting your boost speeds already, there's no real need to mess that up. Also in AMD news, it looks like they are on track for Ryzen 4000. Lisa Su spoke to VentureBeat and confirmed that the next generation mobile CPUs will be launching early next year. This is going to be the first 7 nanometer chips on laptops with integrated graphics. Now, don't get your hopes up on Navi coming to mobile just yet because all we've been hearing about in terms of APUs is Zen 2 coupled with Vega graphics in Renoir. As for a Zen 3, it's about the same story. Dr. Su said that they were well underway for 2020. Taking the previous years into consideration, Zen 3 will likely release around September next year, although that is pure speculation on my part. The good news is that according to an interview with uh, James Pryor from AMD, AMD should be sticking to the AM4 socket through 2020, so you won't have to buy a new motherboard for Zen 3. Well, you might if the board partners lock you out. The three-year-old A320 chipset, for example, isn't supposed to support Ryzen 3rd gen, but we saw some board partners like Biostar enable it. Lastly, for AMD, we were supposed to have news on Threadripper today, but it looks like the company decided to move the announcement to this Thursday. And do you know what this Thursday is? It's the 7th of the month, like almost every release from AMD this year. Anyways, it's only two days away. As for the 3950X, it looks like it's not a part of this presentation. Videocards.com shared a picture with the old embargo dates for the CPUs, and nothing on it mentions the 3950X. Next up, in Microsoft news, their cloud computing business just unveiled Project Silica. This project aims at creating cold storage devices that are designed to stand the test of time. Their first proof of concept was to store the entire 1978 Superman movie on a piece of glass 7.5 by 7.5 centimeters and 2 millimeters thick. The hard silica can be boiled in hot water, baked in an oven, microwaved, flooded, scoured, placed around magnets, and it still worked fine. This type of disk only gets written on once using lasers in different orientations and layers before being encased, so it's read only after that. Each pane contains 75.6 gigabytes of data, which isn't much by our standards, but should be enough to move all of this into a couple of shelves. To read the data, it uses a light that focuses on each layer plus a machine learning algorithm to decode the patterns created by a laser. Pretty cool stuff. Speaking of lasers, you might want to hide your Alexa, Siri, or Google Home device from Windows if you don't want to get hacked. And no, I'm not talking about Microsoft Windows, but literal Windows. So smart devices can control a lot in your home, from lights to sound systems, all the way to your door locks, or make even purchases on Amazon. And since all it takes is someone saying a command, it's pretty vulnerable. But it's even more vulnerable if your device is behind a window. Why? Well, researchers from Japan and the University of Michigan found something they 
they call light commands. Essentially, you can control smart home devices by shining a laser on the microphone at various intensities. This is creating a waveform that is interpreted by the smart device as someone speaking. They tested it out at long distances and through windows, and it seems like it works. Now, I don't know if this bypasses user-specific voice recognition, but it is going to be pretty interesting to see how they plan to fix it. According to lightcommands.com, this would require a complete microphone redesign. It's like back in the day when I would use my uh, universal TV remote to control my neighbor's TV and sound system just to mess with them. Uh, fun days. Anyways, guys, that is pretty much it for the news. If you got any questions or concerns, you can put them down below. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here. So subscribe to the channel, stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. By the way, I'm planning on streaming on uh, Twitch or YouTube. I'm not sure. Use the card at the top to let me know uh, where. It's going to be at the start of the video. So go back to the start of the video and click on the card. Okay, bye.